everyone, it's Kaylee here for Soy and Shay, and thank you so much for joining me for a very quick behind the scenes video as I prepare the lye water for the next few soaps I'm going to be making. Now in the next few soaps I've got in mind, I want to be using some oat milk. And normally I would go and buy that from out of the supermarket and I can pay anywhere between $2 and $2.80 for a one litre carton. Normally what I end up doing is I have in mind that I have a couple of soaps to make. I make the first soap, put that carton of milk back in the fridge because I've only used about two to 300 ml out of it. And then three or four weeks later, I remember that it's in the fridge and I end up having to throw the whole rest of the carton away. So not only is that a waste of product, it's um, that money also needs to be incorporated into the first and only soap that I made with it, making it a very expensive and very wasteful sort of way of making soaps with oat milk. So I've actually been researching into making some plant-based milks for myself to drink in the house and the one of them I came across was oat milk and it was just so easy to make I decided to show you how I was going to make it for my soaps. I'm then going to prepare the sodium hydroxide and distilled water solution for, um, for the soaps and I'm also going to let you know exactly how much it cost me to make my own oat milk. So let's go. Out of all the plant-based milks that you can make, oat milk is perhaps one of the easiest. It doesn't require any soaking time. And once you've made it up, you can pretty much use it straight away, unless you want to drink it and you want to cool it down first. What I have got here, I've got my Nutri Ninja. I'm using the biggest container I've got here. You can use any sort of high powered blender to do these, not a stick blender. It has to be one of these proper blenders and it needs to be fairly high powered because we want to actually really pulverize these oats up. I am starting off with 55 grams of oats in there and they are traditional oats. And next I'm going to add in 500 grams, which is about two cups of water into here. And I am actually using water, it's distilled water, and I have had it in the fridge overnight to get it nice and cool. I've been reading into making plant-based milks for me in the house. And the one common thing that's really come up with the oat milk is to use cool water. Because generally when you add in... Um, hot liquids into oats they go really stodgy and we really don't want that sort of effect in our oat milk that we're making so I've got all of that in there let's get our scale out of the way I have got the base to my Nutri Ninja here I am going to tip that upside down and I'm going to give this a quick blend for about 30 seconds Alright, so that has finished. My blades have stopped spinning and I can see that it is all pulverized down really, really well. So now it is time to strain it. I mustn't have had my lid on quite tight enough because I've got little bits of drips out of that. What I'm going to do is grab myself a clean jug, which I have sterilized here. And I have actually bought myself a nut bag as well. Normally if I'm um, straining things like oils, as I've said in other videos, I tend to do it through a kitchen cloth because I'm trying to get the oils out of these nut bags is really hard. But given that this is just water and oats, I thought we'd invest in the nut bag here. And it's got a really nice fine mesh on it, so it should catch all of this oatmeal behind. What I am gonna do is make sure I am going to have enough um, milk for my project here. So we'll put that on there, tear it out. We'll pop our little um, bag back in there. And all I'm going to do now is pour my oat milk in here. It looks nice and creamy. We'll get all of that out. And then I'm just going to pick my bag up and let all of that milk strain on out. I'm not gonna squeeze too hard because some of that oat milk or the oatmeal might be a little bit fine and come out of my bag here, but I'm gonna squeeze just hard enough to get as much of that milk out as I possibly can. All right, so I've given that a really good squeeze and you can see we've got all of that ground up oat left in my bag. So I'm gonna go and empty that out into my 
little spot that I've got out the front of the garden where I put all of my sort of natural matter that can break down into the garden bed there. Then I'm going to come back and I am going to strain this again just to make sure I've got every ounce of that oatmeal out of it. Alright, so I just want to have a quick look to see how much I've got in here. So I've got 480 grams out of that. That's a pretty good amount of milk there. I have just cleaned out my oat milk here and I'm going to restrain this just in case any little bits did get through and hopefully we will capture them. There was just that little bit still remaining in there. Anything else that is left in this milk, I'm not going to be too worried about because I am going to be using this um, in soap. And that little bit that's in there will be act as an exfoliant in there. So we'll pop that in there. I am going to pour that back into this jug, seeing as that was my, um, my starting point. So I have just lost another 5 grams. But that's not bad. So I'll go and calculate how much this has actually cost just to give you an idea. Right, so I am going to call the oat and the water that's soaked into it wastage, the stuff that I have um, put out into my garden. And what I have got left here now actually cost me 51 cents to make. And I've got in here about half of what you would get in one of those um, little one litre cartons, which cost us $2. So it is actually a considerable saving to do it that way. Now, although I've called that other oat wastage, it really doesn't have to be. If you're making an oatmeal soap, you you can actually save that ground up oat and put that into the soap as an exfoliant. I just didn't need it for these next couple of soaps I'm going to make, but I'm really, really happy with my oat milk that I have got here. I'm now going to make up the rest of the lye solution for this soap. So I've actually got two different recipes that I want to be using this oat milk in. The first one here is my standard recipe. I've had a lot of requests for another oatmeal, milk and honey soap. So that is what I'm going to do with this one. So I've just zoomed you in so you can see a little bit better what we are doing. So I've got my soap calc sheet here and it's telling me that I need 960 grams worth of liquid and 429 grams worth of lye to saponify all of my oils. Now I've decided on this one, normally I would do a one for one lye solution and then make up the rest with my milk. But this time I have decided to go just that little bit over there. So I have worked out from here I want to use 600 grams of distilled water to um, dissolve my lye in and I want 360 grams worth of oat milk. I'm very keen to see how this oat milk is actually going to behave in the soap. Normally when you use other oat milk it does actually move the batter quite quickly but I'm hoping because we've taken out all of those extra additives that it doesn't um, go as quickly as what it usually does because there's no sugar in it this time which usually is what um, really accelerates it going forward so that is for that recipe and then this next one I'm actually going to tuck it under there because this is a recipe I will be sharing on Patreon very soon I have got um, it's telling me I need 300 grams worth of water and 140 of lye so what I have done down the bottom here is I've decided to go with 200 grams of water and 100 grams of that oat milk because I don't want it to be all oat milk in this soap um, and I'm pretty happy with those so let's go and make our lye and water solutions up and the other reason for only using the 360 grams worth of oat milk in this one was so that I could make sure I had enough from that batch that we've just made. Um, doesn't make sense to make any more there. So what I'm going to do is pour in my 600 grams worth of water into this one. And this is my distilled water. I always like to add in a little bit of the tassa silk just to help give it a little bit of slip and silkiness to the soap. And now I have my big bucket of lye here, so I'm going to measure out my 200 and oh sorry 429 grams worth of lye into here. If you are not confident enough to pour this straight into your lye water, measure it out into a separate dish and then um, add it in slowly afterwards. But I'm pretty happy with being able to get this pretty much spot on these days. Now when it comes to adding the lye in, 
I'm never too bothered if I go one or two grams over or under because if you go to all the various um, soap calculators that are out there, they all have a couple of grams of difference. So don't stress too much. The only time you kind of really need to start stressing is if you overshoot by 10 grams um, or more than that because then you actually need to work out or recalculate um, what you're doing. And if you have done that, the simplest way to actually... Um, fix that if you always use the same recipe just double whatever you are making so keep add another lot of that sodium hydroxide into your pot until you come up to double what you should have then put some more um, pour it into some more um, water always pour it into the water not pour the water into it and um, you've rescued your live water so don't ever worry if you do overshoot you just got to do a little bit of calculating to make sure that you get it right again um, but as I said if it's only one or two grams over don't stress about it because all the soap calcs are different all right so I'm going to give that just a bit of a stir now the reason why the soap calculators are um, often different by a couple of grams is because it is however that person has set that calculator up with the saponification values. The saponification values often have a lot of um, decimal point numbers after after the main number so it depends upon how the person has actually rounded up or rounded down those numbers to what sort of value that it calculates and most of them will only be one or two grams off. So I'm happy with that. I'm going to go and pop the lid on that one to keep it in a nice safe place and then we're going to make the live solution up for my other soap so this time because it's only a smaller amount I've only got my little jug here I am going to pour in my 200 grams worth of water and again the same with your water if you overshoot by a little bit it doesn't really matter if you are water discounting so you're you know working at 30 percent and you overshoot by 20 grams it really doesn't matter all it's going to do is mean that your water percentage or your percentage of water to oil weight is probably going to be something like 30.5 instead so don't worry too much if you do overshoot on your water it's not nearly as um, concerning as your lie Let's put our lye in here. Now, I'm not going to put tassar silk in this one because I am trying to keep this one as a vegan soap because I've actually had someone put in a request for a vegan facial bar. So we won't put the tassar silk in this one. So we'll just add in. But having that oat milk in here should give it that slip and glide that I'm looking for in my soaps anyway. All right, so that one has had just a quick stir there just to make sure that all that lye is up from the bottom. The next thing I'm going to go and do is weigh out the oat milk for each of these soaps and create all of my oils for them. And then I will get on to making the soaps once all this has come down to the right temperature. The first soap you will see me make will be the facial bar soap. And then at a later stage you will get to see the, um, the oatmeal milk and honey soap, which we'll be doing in a slab this time. So I hope you have enjoyed watching watching how I have made my oat milk and also prepared the lye water for the next um, coming soaps. Um, if you did, why not leave me a thumbs up and any comments down below. And until the next video comes out, I hope you have a great one and I'll see you then. Bye.